ISO 27001 or and review the, those certifications to make sure that all the areas of importance to you were covered. And then on-site reviews uh, for physical security and architectures. So that was my talk, guys. I have one dog left, so I'm going to give that to the best question that gets asked. Mm. That is true, and, and that's the reason why you probably don't want to use IPsec for outside your organizational communication. It will primarily be intra within the intranet communication where it makes most sense, either tunnel dot transport IPsec. If, if you have to monitor uh, data that goes outside, then it doesn't make sense to encrypt it with IPsec. I think it makes more sense to encrypt it via SSL certificates in that scenario. Uh, we are keys in, in that scenario because then you can, uh, your, um, your proxy servers will be able to, uh, since they know the keys, they will be able to look at the data that hides behind those SSL and be able to determine whether that is secure or not. So it, it makes, SSL makes more sense in those scenarios than, than IPsec for outside the uh, organization communication. Good question. Any other questions? What is the effect of recession on this um, whole industry, ex specifically in your company, if there is a recession? How is it going to affect your, uh, this part of your... The, the good part is that information security is recession-proof. <laughs> there is, there is uh, I think most organizations realize by now that their biggest or asset is information. So the sky is the limit, and I, I say that within quotes, of course, that's, that's not completely true, but if you have a good case, you will always get money. There is, there is no um, consequence of that, but particularly since it is coming from the board of directors level that you should have good practices in place, the CEO level that you should have good practices in place. Most often, if you, if you can build a good case, if you, can, um, if you can justify why you need dollars for a certain technology or a certain process, you will almost always get it. So you, you guys are studying in a good field right now. After the, uh, all the press uh, regarding the TJX uh, breach, uh, what did, uh, I'm sure people called you from above the ladder or whatever and said, hey, we don't want to make the headlines next. What were those things that, that, that the CEO level or the, the CTO level were looking down to you to reassure them when they saw competitors making the front page? Um, I think the, the first thing that, that came down to us was to analyze our um, infrastructure to see if the vulnerabilities of the kind that happened in TJ Maxx existed within our environment. So that, that was the first reactive step. And then uh, the second step in that direction was um, uh, not only ensure that what happened in TJ Maxx doesn't happen for us, but also look take it take it a step beyond, and and, and that's where I, I think a lot of uh, uh, new strategic initiatives for us came from. Take it a step beyond. Think about what could be wrong, what could go wrong versus what has gone wrong in other places, and then try to manage those problems. So those those were, and that's where I, I think this this presentation outlined some of the things that, um, that we have to start thinking about it now. Were there any major changes uh, to either policy or your architecture or uh, software that you were using, whether UWPA or you, you are using WEP or you'd already changed over? Were there things that, that Target changed in response to what had happened? I, I think the biggest change was in, this, in the area of awareness. So um, we made sure that people in stores, that's where the breach happened for TJ Maxx that people in stores are, are more cognizant of what uh, security means to an organization. We, made, we wanted to ensure that people in, in, in headquarters are aware of how they need to uh, implement technology such that it is uh, less prone to uh, breaches in stores. So those were some of the immediate things that we started working on. Then, then um, 
we also started looking at making our proxy environments more um, smart, of course, to uh, uh, as, because uh, denial of service is another big thing that is that is gaining prominence right now. A lot of um, um, uh, a, a lot of uh, the hackers are now uh, demanding ransom money in, in t <laughs> to not do denial of service against you. So that's another thing. If, uh, as you say, that organizations, their largest asset is information, and in a uh, large organization you have a board of directors whose responsibility is to oversee the operations of the company and to serve in the best interest of the investors, do you think at some point instead of having a CSO report to a CEO, we're going to see it more where the CSO or somebody involved in audit, for example, would report directly to the board? That, that's a good question. Um, it, it, it's kind of a mix of both. I, I don't think CS, CEO is the highest um, executive in the organization. So I think the reporting relationships are not going to change where the CSO reports directly to the board of directors. But what is going to happen is, is that the um, board of directors is going to demand a direct interface with the CEO, CSOs. They are going to demand direct reporting from the CSOs. So that the same conflict of interest thing that we talked about, if there is a, any possibility of that, that gets avoided in this scenario. So audit findings, um, metrics reporting, um, uh, uh, things of that nature. So I think that that's, that's more likely to be the trend versus CSOs being directly responsible to board of directors. Yeah. As a uh, security executive yourself, do you have any recommendations for the students here in terms of uh, if they want to achieve that level, um, things they should be doing? Should they all go out and get MBAs or study business in depth? Or what, what things would you recommend for students to do if they wanted to pursue that route? Uh, that's the best question so far. So <laughs> um, it, It's very interesting, and I, I will talk from my own experience. So when I, when I graduated from Purdue, I went to work for Silicon Graphics, designing supercomputers. And as you know, it's, it's, it's very core technology. You don't, you don't get a knowledge of business. You are solving, you are doing things at an algorithmic level. You are doing things at a chip level. You, are not sol you, are, you don't understand how the guys in the sales for, flow force are selling that. You don't understand what type of requirements are there in the marketplace that you need to satisfy. That was my big blind spot. Um, in, in, after I left Silicon Graphics I, and, and Cray Research, I, I went to work for a small company called Parametric Technology Corporation, and that was my interface to the business world. I was a still a, a principal engineer for them, but in my that position, I was also responsible for a lot of customer implementations. And that's when I gained real knowledge of the business problems that, um, that different organizations deal with. When you talk with a, a, a CIO in an, uh, in, in an organization where primary focus is not technology, you get to understand a, a little bit about their business. You get to understand the business problems that they face and, and how can you solve that. So, no, you don't necessarily need an MBA to, um, to become an executive in information security, but I think what you do absolutely need is a thorough understanding of business aspects of things. I would strongly encourage you to widen your um, uh, focus beyond, just beyond technology. Techno core technology is good for you. It will last you a lifetime. But you need to understand more than that. You need to understand how business functions. You need to understand finances a little bit. You need to understand what are important things for an organization. You need to understand business plans. Uh, once you have that understanding, I think it's easy to um, uh, uh, play both the roles. And I think you become a much more, more stronger executive as a result. The reason being that you will find, um, you won't find a lot of very senior executives who understand technology very well. So if you, if you do understand technology very well and you have a good knowledge of business, I, I think that's an automatic differentiator for you. That takes you a lot farther. If you don't have any additional questions, uh, we can end this talk. Uh, I will linger around for a little bit, so if you have any additional questions, feel free to stop by. I left my business cards out here, so um, if you are interested, you can take one. Um, 
has my contact information.